Hey, what's up? In this video, I'm going to set up my local dev environment and then I'm going to set up the hosting on my shared hosting server. Bear in mind, I'm doing this on a Windows. If you're doing it on a Mac or Linux, there's going to be little differences. Now, this isn't so much a tutorial. It's a matter of I'm going to build this and I'm going to build it in front of you. So there's going to be errors, there's going to be bugs, I'm going to get stuck, I'm not going to know what I've done wrong, but that's going to help you to be able to witness my thought process because you're inevitably going to come up against bugs. That is a lot of what we do as web developers. So it's not going to be as polished. Now, this is what I want to get across in this video is setting up shared hosting there's a step that it took me a long time to understand this step and i'm going to demonstrate it for you now if you're already doing local web development and you're logging into clients hosting accounts and you're pointing dns servers to ip addresses this isn't the video for you okay you're more advanced so you can move forwards in the videos this is part of a playlist I've left a link to the playlist in the video description. So the steps may be different depending on what software you're using to set up your local environment. Some of the steps that I'm going to go ahead and do now, your software may do it for you, but it's good to know what is going on under the hood. I'm not a sysadmin, okay? So I don't know everything about what apache is doing and web servers and port numbers and all that but i know enough to get the job done without breaking things i've been doing this for almost four years i've not broke anybody's site or lost a site or anything like that okay the site's always gone live on time when it's supposed to okay disclaimers out of the way let's get going now the first thing i'm going to do is I'm going to set up my local dev environment. So we need a directory. Now I've been using OneDrive for my projects. When you install WAMP, for example, on a Windows, it will set up a directory in your C drive. Um, I'm using OneDrive so that I can do my projects anywhere and also on my Mac. Now, I've tried to do this video before, so I already have a directory here. I've called it Michael, and if we look inside here, I've just given it an index.php, a JS file for the JavaScript, uh, inc file just stands for includes, that will become clear later on what that's for, and an images folder. So let's now set up a virtual host. Why do we want to set up a virtual host? What is a virtual host? Well, when WAMP is installed out of the box, when you set up a domain, it's going to be something like this. And then the name of the directory. Now, if we're doing WordPress development, especially WordPress development, you don't want a URL like this. You want this instead. And that's what we're going to do. The way that WordPress uh, arranges its URLs and how it calls URLs in the style sheets and that kind of thing, it, you're going to run into problems doing it that way. So we're going to set up this, which is, as far as I know, a virtual host. So how do we do that? In our favorite ed text editor, whatever that is, we're going to locate this folder. Uh, sorry, this file. This is where it should be located if you've used WAMP on a Windows. So I'm going to just co uh, copy and paste one of these. And, you know, Leading up to making these videos, I was a little bit wary because I'm giving you access to my personal files, which have got uh, client sites, some of which are not even live yet. 
so I was just a little bit wary of that. Okay, so this is what I want. I'm going to save that. I'm going to show you how this little step here ties in with the shared hosting account where the domain is registered, which in my case happens to be GoDaddy. So the next thing we want to do is open up uh, a file called the hosts file. And to do that, I'm going to use Notepad. I'm going to right click on here so that I can open it as administrator, run as administrator to be able to make this change. It's a file that Windows hides from you so that only advanced power users will make changes. It's going to make changes to your system. So uh, I have easy access to the file I want. Um, I'll leave. So this is the file path that we're going through to get here. It's in your C drive. Now, as I said, it's hidden, so we need to come over here. Click all files and there it is hosts. So now I've auto, as I said I've made this video twice already. I've already added it here. Um, that's basically all you want. So this number followed by the name of the directory where you're going to store your project. Just the name of it. So that's all in there ready to go. OK, that's fine. Now let's just go to the browser and it's a good way to check, just make sure everything's okay. Right, okay, forbidden, what's going on here? We didn't restart the server. Restart all services. This is uh, my instance of WAMP. So it's gonna go amber and then it's gonna go green. Okay, uh, let's do this again. Okay, now we get a blank, which is what we want. I don't know why it's saying forbidden there, but uh, this is good to go. Now, setting up the shared hosting. So I've got my domain. So the next thing we want to do is Virtually, we're going to do the same thing that I did on my local environment. We're going to do on here. Now, I said that there was a step that I didn't quite understand. It's not that... Well, yeah, I didn't understand it. I just didn't understand, like I would forget the step. What am I going on about? Well, let's go into uh, cPanel. I don't know if we have actually got cPanel. It's some kind of version of it anyway. So we're going to go web hosting, manage, and this is what you'll do with your client sites when you log in. They should set you up as a user so that you can't purchase things. Now, okay, hosted domains is what we're looking for. So we click in here. Right, now here's where we create an instance of the domain name with the um, directory where that project is stored. Now think of this step. Now bear in mind I'm not a sysadmin, okay? But here's what I understand from this step is basically what we did over here and in the hosts file. So what we're going to do is we're going to click add domain. Now you don't need a www or http or anything like that. Just the name of the domain name, michaelthomas.io. It's offering it me there in capitals, but I'm not going to take that. Now, just a forward slash, it would put, that would mean that you're going to put all of the project files in the root, which I don't want because I've got multiple websites on this server. So it's going to have its own directory. And for simplicity's sake, we're just going to make that the same as the directory on my local environment, but you could make it different. It's already made that in black capitals there. Okay, let's give this a once over. That's looking good. Okay. Alrighty then. And that is pending. 
Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we wanna connect to the server so that we can push our files from local up to the live website. And to do that, I'm using a software called FileZilla. So we need to make a connection to the live server. I've already done that here. Now, uh, so I would go to Site Manager to set it up. You go to My Sites, New Site, and then you'd put in the host uh, details, which uh, is the IP address. Now, I'm setting up the shared server. I'm actually more in favor of using VPSs and using something known as SSH connection. It's a more secure way of uh, it's a more secure workflow, a way of pushing files up to the live server so that they don't get intercepted uh, on its way. If you're using very, very strong passwords, it's not always entirely necessary. And that's those are the words of serverpilot.io. Okay, so we've got means to push the files up. Let's see if our domain is set up, but I suspect it isn't set up just yet. It's most probably pending. Uh, okay, there we go, that's set up. So if we go into FileZilla, uh, we connected, we should see a directory here called Michael. Double click to go into here. Okay, this is just a default help HTML file. Uh, you can uh, delete that, we don't need that. If you see any folders which say something like CGI bin or HT access, don't muck around with those unless you know what you're doing. Now we want to locate our site here. But let's put something into the index.php. We'll add our project folder to Atom. Okay, let's just be really cheesy and say, hello world, saving you. Right, let's go to here. Right, now what we wanna do, you see these file paths here. Now to make your workflow quicker, you're gonna copy this you're going to go into, oh no, I know this all assumes you're using FileZilla, but the principles should be the same depending on, well, no matter what software you're using. So in here, in advanced, default local directory. It's going to go in there and uh, this uh, path here. Is going to go into default remote directory. Now that's a very important step because you could be, you know, you might have lack of sleep, you're under pressure, you come in here, you're a little bit tired, you connect to the server, but you forget to locate the correct directory. And without you knowing, you may have a bunch of files here. It says JS and CSS. Oh, that must be the right project. You double click this and you've overwrite, you've overwritten something and you're just gonna end up in a mess. So that's a very important step. It's gonna put you in the right uh, directories. Okay, we're gonna select all of these, right click, upload. And there we have it. Now, I'm pretty sure there's a step I missed out. And we need to wait for DNS, something called DNS propagation to occur. Oh, there we go. Hello world. So now we know it's set up on the live server. It's set up on the local environment. We can push all of our files up. We've hosted the site here. The next thing we need to do is set up a subdomain. I like to set up dev.michaelthomas.io. Some people like to use staging. 
Rather than do that in this video, because this one's gone on quite long, I'll do this on a new one. So I hope you got something from this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for bearing with me. I am doing my absolute best to get these out to you. Uh, none of this was planned. I just came up with the idea and decided to run with it. Anyhow, enough of that. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace. Before you go, I just want to let you know about Team Treehouse. It's where I'm learning JavaScript right now. They'll take you from beginner level all the way to professional from HTML, CSS, and then on to JavaScript if you want, or Python, PHE, PHP. They've got pretty much everything here, man. Look at this, C Sharp, Android, iOS. Um, I actually built an iPhone app with the help of Team Treehouse. I'm currently doing their full stack JavaScript track. So uh, for $25 per month, you get all of those tracks on there. So uh, go have a look, see what you think. They've got tech degrees as well, which I think is a good alternative to a boot camp. If you don't want to spend a whole heap of money on a boot camp, have a look at the tech degree. There's a free trial, so you've nothing to lose by trying it out. I've left my affiliate link in the video description below, so please, if you're going to sign up, use my link. It helps to support what I'm doing here on YouTube. I'm documenting my learning journey over on my website. I'll leave that link in the video description as well. This goes all the way back to 2015. There are gaps where I was just so busy I wasn't coming back to doc document it, but I, I will be from now on. I've made a promise to myself. Anyway, thanks for watching the video and thanks for supporting what I do. Catch you on the next one. Peace.